What's up everybody, Mike Lazarecki here, and today we're talking about speed ramping in DaVinci Resolve 16. Let's do it. Okay, so real quick, if you are new to this channel, I am Mike Lazarecki. I try to provide you guys with photo video gear reviews, tutorials, and photography and filmmaking tips and tricks so that you can add those to your creative toolboxes. So if that sounds like something that you're into, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button for me, and uh, that way you'll know when I upload more content. Anyway, so what is speed ramping? When do you use speed ramping and why would you use speed ramping? So speed ramping is an editing technique that is usually used with off time footage like 60 frames a second or 120 frames a second. And it's usually utilized to further accentuate a moment in that footage by transitioning from normal or high speed footage to that slow motion shot. Probably the most famous example of speed ramping is from the original Matrix movie where the action would be going at normal speed and then it would slow down to almost no motion at all to show you the details that would be pretty much imperceptible to a normal person. So after it was used in the Matrix, this technique became so popular that it was used in uh, pretty much every action movie from Bad Boys 2 all the way up to, you know, Avengers Endgame. So speed ramping is definitely something you want to know how to do and get the most out of. So let's jump over into the computer and I'll show you how it works. Okay guys, so we are here in DaVinci Resolve 16 and the first thing we want to do is import some clips that are shot in a high frame rate, i.e. slow motion. Okay, so you're talking something that's going to be in the 60 frames a second category or the 120 frames a second category. Sometimes you might be able to get some cameras that are going to shoot 240. Same concept, we're not really talking about frame rates right now. So. Uh, one thing I want to make sure I show you is, especially if you're coming over from uh, Premiere Pro, so sometimes cameras will shoot that slow motion footage in real time at a higher frame rate. So that'll be like 60p or 59.94p. That's going to have audio with it and it's going to play back at what you would describe as normal speed. So for example, this clip right here was shot at 60 frames a second uh, or 60p. So it did include audio and also uh, plays back at what you can see is sort of like normal speed. Now, uh, in Premiere Pro, if you right click and you do some modify thing and you can interpret the footage back into 24 frames a second, you can do the same thing here in DaVinci Resolve by right clicking on the clip over in your media panel, clicking on clip attributes, and click on this drop down menu and you can choose what your desired playback frame rate is. So if we say 23.976, you can see when I play this back, that it plays back in slow motion. And you can also see that it's pretty choppy footage because your boy here decided to shoot in slow motion but not change his shutter speed on that camera, which uh, I guess I'm just getting spoiled and used to cameras that do that automatically for me. Uh, this one does not, so oh well. Uh, not really a very usable clip, but hey, I digress. Okay, so let's bring in a clip that we're gonna use for this speed ramping stuff, okay? So what we can do here, and I've already kind of selected some in and out points on this specific clip. So you can see here we have this sliding shot and basically it slides out from behind the tree and reveals this waterfall in the background with this couple fishing down here in the foreground. So that's the clip we're gonna use for this tutorial. I'm gonna bring in just the footage portion of it and then I'm gonna hold Alt and scroll out so I can zoom myself out a little bit here and give myself the best view of everything here. So in order to get started with your speed ramping, what you need to do is select your clip and you can either right click and click on Retime Controls or you can select the clip and hit Control R and that will bring up your retime controls. They will both bring up the same exact thing on the clip. Now you can see that this gives you some arrows here and a drop down selector with 100% sitting next to it. That's just the current speed of the clip. Uh, so, so in order to get started with speed ramping after we have our retime controls, what we wanna do is we wanna select our spots where we want the clip to change speeds. So we wanna start with maybe right here. We're gonna click on this drop down menu and hit add speed point. And then we're gonna go ahead and scrub through and we're gonna select maybe right there is where I'd like it to slow back down again. So I'm gonna add another speed point there. Now, right now we just have these kind of markers, okay? And then 100%, 100%, 100%. The idea here is we can take this center one and we can change the speed to, let's go with 800%. Now that speeds it up drastically, okay? Now what we can do is play it back through and it's going to speed up going through that one section. 
So maybe we're watching this back and we realize that, okay, so that lead up time frame is just a little too long. If we want to adjust that, all we need to do is grab the bottom of one of these speed points and drag it over, and it doesn't change the percentage on any of these three sections. And you can see that now we have a shorter lead up and then it speeds up and slows down where we want it to. That's great. Now, if we weren't really sure of the speed that we wanted this to go at, we could actually grab one of these top handles of the control point. And what that does is going to speed up or slow down the footage incrementally. As you can see here, now I'm up to 104% or down below 100%. So sometimes you might wanna use that to kind of dial in the speed of the fast motion portion, but sometimes it's a little bit harder to kind of get it back to a specific percentage that way. So we can see our lead ups a little bit shorter and we've got our speedy time and then it goes back to slow motion. So here you go, now this is speed ramped. So you could feasibly just use this the way it is and it would look fine and you have yourself this cool speed ramping footage. However, if you want to make this a little bit better, something you can do is select this clip, right click and hit retime curve. And we can now control how this curve affects that transition time between the normal motion and the fast motion, making it so that we can more smoothly control how abruptly or how smoothly it changes speeds. So let's do that. First thing you wanna do, this is gonna frustrate the hell out of you. If you just do the retime curve and forget to do this next step, uh, these are just the retime frame. So this is where it retimes. It has nothing to do with the speed or the smoothness of that curve. So what you wanna do is hit this drop down select retime speed and deselect retime frame. Now when you select this line, you can actually select these control points and you can see right now that this goes from 100% and it shoots straight up at a right angle to 800%. And what you can do is smooth that out and you can select this guy, click on this button here to give it a curve and now you have control over how smooth that curve actually is. So we can make that curve a little smoother. We can do the same to this back end one here. And now we will end up with a much smoother transition for our speed ramping. Now that looks way, way better. So we can click on this X up here or we can just hit Control R again to remove the retime controls. And we can also get rid of our retime curve by either right clicking and then checking here, or we can click on this little curves icon on the right hand side of the clip and that will get rid of that. So we have some pretty nice looking speed ramping going on here. So something we can do to refine this a little bit further is actually add a little bit of motion blur to the fast section of this clip which will help to sell the change in speed. So in order to do that, we need to add an adjustment clip. We can do a search here in our effects panel. We can bring this in. So let's bring up our retime controls again so that we can see where it begins and where it ends. So we can bring our adjustment clip over and resize that adjustment clip just into that area. So then what we wanna do is go to open effects and find directional blur and drag that onto our adjustment clip. Now, once we've done that, keep that adjustment clip selected and go into your inspector and click on open effects. And this will give you the dialog box for that blur. Now you can see if we increase this, it's going to seriously affect what this blur looks like. And right now it doesn't really look realistic or the way we would want it to. So we need to change the blur angle. And since this is a lateral move, we wanna to go to 180 degrees. So it looks like it's going side to side here. Now you can see on the edges that you have this kind of black fade. What we wanna do is go down here where it says border type black. We wanna change that to replicate and then that'll make it look like it's just continuing the frame off to the edge. That's a lot more what we're looking for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keyframe this at the beginning of the adjustment clip, at the middle of the adjustment clip and at the end of the adjustment clip so that we end up with a sort of ramp up and down. Up here at blur strength, I'm going to put it down at zero. I'm gonna click on my keyframe diamond. Then I'm gonna come over here roughly into the middle of the adjustment clip. Then I'm going to raise the blur strength up to where I like it, probably just to taste. So we'll say for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna say 0 0.60. And then I'm gonna to go to the end of the adjustment clip and I'm going to bring that back down to zero. Okay, 
Now, if we preview this, we're going to now see that we have a little bit of motion blur in that fast section, and it gives it a little bit of a dynamic look. So I like doing that. It kind of adds uh, sort of a premium feel to that speed ramp. Now what you can do here is you can now adjust things a little bit. I did notice that the motion is not 100% side to side here, so it does kind of move to the left and down a little bit. So what we can do is when we get to our fully blurred section, we can kind of change the direction of that blur a little bit. So maybe let's do 170 instead of 180 degrees. Maybe that'll look a little more natural. There we go. Maybe 175. Now, that looks more natural. So there you go guys, some solid tips and tricks for speed ramping in DaVinci Resolve 16. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. Consider subscribing if you're not already. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if you guys enjoyed this video and if you wanna see some more stuff like this or maybe if you have any suggestions for me as far as different things to cover. And uh, yeah, aside from that, I will see you guys next week. Later.